Welcome to Jesus or Muhammad. And yes, indeed, it's Friday night. I hope you're feeling all right because we certainly are. And we're going to be talking about slavery. That's right, slavery in Islam. If you're an American and brought up in the public schools, probably the only slavery you ever heard of was uh, the white man in America enslaving black Africans in the uh, founding of the, in America all the way up until the Civil War. However, as we've been pointed out in the previous program, we're going to talk about tonight and then again tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. with uh, pa uh, Pastor Emery Moss, dear brother Osama Dakduk once again, we will talk about how even to the present day, for the 1,400 years of Islam's existence, they have been taking slaves and following the example of their prophet Muhammad and following the injunctions in the Quran. Our first show in this series of three shows on slavery in Islam at 6.30 p.m., uh, Brother Osama dedicated most of the time to showing that slavery did exist in the Bible, but it was not slavery in the modern context where you would take people against their will or steal men. As a matter of fact, Brother Osama proved quite clearly that this type of slavery, that is the common perception of the word today, was specifically uh, and categorically outlawed, and the punishment for it in the Old Testament is death. And in the New Testament is hellfire hell in the friend. sense that you'll not be saved if you're a, if you're a, a continual and unrepentant man-stealer. Amen. Brother Osama, I want to welcome you back on the show again tonight. Thank you. It's my joy to sit next to you. It's a pleasure to be it's with fun. you, brother. And there's a third one here, the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And without Him, we will not be here or will be here without any power. I pray His power will be evident through us, especially speaking to the unregenerate folks out there who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will see His truth through our mouths, compelling but yet in love. And uh, let me just say before I give it over to you that uh, we started out with, with showing the, the slavery that existed in the Bible, the Old Testament, and uh, the New Testament, of course, having no slavery whatsoever, but showing that, that the, the true God, Yahweh, of the Old and New Testament, uh, never condoned slavery of going and stealing men and women and making traffic of them mm -hmm. uh, and keeping them as your sex slaves. However, Islam is quite different, and uh, tonight's program is going to be more of a comparison, sort Absolutely. of a transitionary show, if you will, uh, Islam in the East, Islam in the West. All we've ever been told about, most of us in the West, is the slavery in the West. But what most people don't know, and most uh, Muslim converts in America, particularly black American converts, have no clue of the slavery in the East, particularly Muslim slaves mm. and slave, Muslim slave trading of a, a huge slave trade in Eastern Africa. And on that note, I'm going to give it over to Brother Osama now, to uh, bring this topic forth to light. Well, brother, as you talk right now, you are leading me to find the reason why I put this seminar together. Uh, as I travel all over this country, I have been involved in so uh, different prison ministry in, uh, in, in uh, Virginia, in, yeah. uh, in uh, Carolina, and in Florida. As I travel to the prison ministry and meet with uh, Muslim in the prison, uh, I was found uh, the, the, the shocking news, uh, brother, uh, that, uh, that, that the Muslim in the prison system, they became a Muslim because of a lie. Mm. And this lie is... They used to be Muslim in Africa. The white European and the white American bought them to slavery, and they forced them into Christianity, and the word which is created or made up by the Muslim in the West, and especially in America, is revert to Islam. So they asked him to come back. Now, this is specifically with black Americans. Nation of Islam is begin, but now obviously it's everybody else, those who believe in Nation of Islam or not Nation of Islam. Yeah. And, uh, and believe it or not, for a good 10 years, I struggled with uh, put this seminar together because I want to say uh, the fact is my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. American yeah. people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not knowing anything about Islam, yeah. nor the, the, the deception of Islam. So, uh, and of course, what another reason caused me to put this seminar together is the statement of Barack Hussein Obama yeah. uh, about the book of Leviticus and how he said the book of Leviticus teach yeah. slavery is okay. Sure. No, obviously that is a lie. And uh, there are so many misconceptions right. uh, to the truth about the uh, slavery. And uh, we're right now, within the next uh, hour and a half, I hope and I pray that we'll be able to cover the historical perspective. Yes. What happened in the, within the history of slave uh, and uh, 
what is the real story about slave? Yeah. And hopefully, and I pray that uh, uh, we will cover some of the lies the Muslim uh, are uh, teaching to the, uh, to the American, especially black people, concerning Islam. Amen. So we're going to get into this uh, slide. Uh, hopefully, as uh, uh, our friends will watch us on the camera, they will see that we're, we're going to make a comparison. What happened in the West is uh, slavery in the West, and in front of it, immediately on the slide, we're going to have slavery in Islam. Uh, for example, if we watch together here, uh, as we see slavery in the West, the historical, the history has written, has told us that... Slave trade to the Americas... Would you like me to read that for you? What, if you don't mind, one more time. For the While much has been written concerning the transatlantic slave trade to the Americas, very little attention has been given to the Islamic slave trade across the Sahara, the Red Sea, and the Indian Ocean. Hmm. It, it is a fact, Brother Jews, yeah. that the whole world today is talking about the slavery uh, in the West. Uh, they that, make movies about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Know. There's plenty of movies. Yeah. And so far, I have not uh, seen anybody, at least me, talk about slavery in the Middle East, slavery in Islam. Where is a movie about sla the Muslim slave trade? I mean, th there must literally be 30 or 40 movies about slavery in the West. I don't know of one movie that, that highlights slavery in the East. Not only we don't have movie, Brother Joseph, we didn't even talk about it. I was yeah. shocked. I was yeah. shocked. Uh, it's exactly five years ago when yeah. the Senate, uh, I believe the congressman actually, were talking about slavery in Sudan. Yeah. And they opened this topic and I said, praise God, it's about time yeah. our government will take positive step to talk about slavery in, in Sudan and end the slavery in Sudan. And after maybe a couple months or so, Mm. They close the book, they close the chapter, and la life to whom you call. I mean, it's like nothing happened, the topic was closed, and uh, they start talking about something else. Yeah, yeah. So they open the book. And that's a sad thing. Little has been told about what's happening today and what happened in the past. I wish yeah. someday uh, somebody from the Hollywood will, uh, will, will, will even uh, listen and, and search for the, hist for the true history and about slavery in the Middle East, slavery in Islam, and right. somebody will make us a movie about the true history of slavery after Muhammad as it yes. is written in Islam. Yes. We'll, we'll continue with this uh, next slide. we watch this together. Mm -hmm. While the European involvement in the transatlantic slave trade to the Americas lasted for 300 years, the Muslim involvement in the slave trade has lasted over 14 centuries and still continues in some parts of the Muslim world. We're talking about 300 <laughs> years yeah. and it stopped. It's, we don't have it anymore. We know, you, you don't go to Germany, you don't go to Holland or France or England, or you don't go to America, any of the 50 states of North America, and we still have slaves. Yeah. 300 years, and it's history, and it's gone. And, and, and by the way, very importantly, who stopped it? It was Western Christians. We're, we, it's coming up. Who's, we're going we're yeah, to put go all this, and uh, I, I, I really believe one of the great presidents in this country by the name Thomas Jefferson, yeah. and he is the one who ended it. Yeah. who literally stopped it for a long time. Sadly, uh, the last few years now, nobody's talking. Nobody's talking about it. it we're just let it go. But yeah. 300 years, Brother Joseph, comparing to 1,400 years. Just a lot thing. 300 years and 1,400 years of slavery. And it's still there. Mm -hmm. we, it's not ended. Why we don't talk about something has been done for 1,400 years and we keep writing stories, writing books, making movies about the past of 300 years? Good question. Good question. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Let's okay. see it. The next piece here we see <clears throat> in the West. While the mortality rate for the slaves that were transported across the Atlantic was as high as 10%, the percentage of slaves who died in transit in the Trans-Sahara and East African slave trade was between 80 and 90 percent. Amazing. Amazing. Now, by the way, before we move on, uh, these things, this information that you're getting, wh where do you find this type of information? It is, uh, has been recorded historically uh, online. Yeah. These are uh, most respected scholars. And there's uh, books about it too. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. So this is not just like uh, maybe some information I got up from my own head. I'm trying to put it up. These yeah. are facts. Th this is, by the way, one book, who, mm. uh, 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 Slavery, Terrorism, and Islam, 
The Historical Roots and Contemporary Threat by Peter Hammond. Yes. And, uh, and he documents some of these same statistics. And so just to make sure that our uh, Muslim uh, viewers don't think that we're making this up, uh, the, these are found, and there are some books that have been written. Oh, uh, Ted plenty, Shabbat mentioned of books. Yes, The indeed. Slave Ship of Human History, mm -hmm. and uh, there are other books I think that uh, perhaps Emory Moss will mention tomorrow night. So these, these statistics that we Brother can, Osama yes. is, is bringing, if any Muslim or anyone doubts them, send us an email, abn at abnsat.com. Or uh, what's your email? Uh, Usama at the straightway.org. And we will provide you Absolutely. the, the needed reference. As a matter of fact, well, why not? Uh, tomorrow we'll just uh, give a, a nice list of historic historians good idea. who wrote all this. And we'll have it on our uh, program. That's we a good maybe idea. put it down in the bottom the, in the control Amen. rooms. You can do that. Amen. So people can go back and check our information out. Very important. So we're talking about 10%. And we're making a big smoke about it. And we forgot the 80, 90%. 10% of slaves from uh, Africa to America died, but 80 to 90% of slaves from Africa to the Middle East died. 80 to 90%. Well, and, and by the way, this is, we have uh, archaeological, not archaeological, uh, proven of um, when they see people chained in their feet and they're all dead in yeah. the Sahara. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about. There's sometimes a mass a large number of slaves, and somehow uh, they lo get lost in the desert, well, the or they got or hungry, and they covered with them. sand, and all this. And but they were chained from the, the how that how did you know that they were slaves? Because they're not traveling free. They have uh, locks on their foot. The chain, chain is, is there, the and the bone is there. Of course, yes. So that's that's obviously the great evidence that this will not uh, just uh, you don't travel chain yourself somebody else on your foot. It's it's a slave. It's a slave line. And by, and by the way, uh, these things were happening before Western Europeans even knew that there what was an that? America. You know, uh, that, before, that didn't happen until 1400 A.D., 1480, 80, what is it, 83 or Columbus. But, yeah. you know, so, so, so for 700 uh, years there, there was an Islamic slave trade before there was even an America concerning the Western European view. And you know where we have the evidence for that? Mm. The Quran. Yeah. You know what else? Yeah. The Hadith. Yeah. If the Quran said it, and if the Hadith said it, that means it happened in Muhammad days, mm -hmm. and it's still until today. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't stop, but I have to share this with the people. Mm. Five years ago, I was in Kuwait, and we were on a mission trip, and it was 2.30 in the morning in Kuwait airport. And no kidding, a long line. A long line of females, uh, maybe I can say a good 15... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 15 meter, what is 15 meter to uh, number? Fe well, 45, feet. 50 foot feet, yeah, long, feet. long line of young ladies uh, between the age of maybe, I'm guessing, 8, 9, 10 to 20. Black slave, strong, uh, I mean, big line uh, inside Kuwait airport, hmm. 2 and 30 in the morning. Or somebody, well, maybe they're on a school trip. Yeah, 2, 30 in the morning, 4 or 5 Kuwaiti men, with branches, brother, with branches, and they will hit them on the shoulder, saying, stand up straight, stand up straight, you, and he names him, gives some fresh word. Mm -hmm. And as he lift up the, the, the stack in his hand, or the branch in his hand, the girls were running away from the camera, from the staff, and they were running away like that. And I know, and I know, my heart, 100%, mm -hmm. that's a line of slave. 